Good day, Mr. Ivanov. Pat, how are you? Good. Good. Okay, Your Worship, it is 4.40. We are streaming to YouTube and recording. Okay, uh, before we start, just a gentle reminder, please speak up clearly so that uh, when this is being recorded, uh, the public can hear all the voices. Uh, I think everything has gone pretty smooth. That was the only uh, concern that was brought out by citizens. Anyway, welcome to the regular meeting of council electronically via Zoom, June 2nd, 2020, time 440. Meeting called to order and we'll have a moment of silence. Approval of the agenda. The motion moved by Casey Owen, seconded by Dennis Perrier. Be it resolved that the agenda for the regular meeting of council held on June 2nd, 2020, beginning at 4.40 p.m. be approved as circulated to all members of council, and that council suspends provision 15 of bylaw 15075 being a bylaw regulating the procedures of council to permit a public meeting heading for the purposes of a zoning bylaw amendment at 48 McCamus Avenue. Okay, just to make things a little simpler, rather than everybody putting their hand up, uh, does anybody object to the approval of the agenda? None noted. Motion carried. Declaration of uh, pecuniary interest. Councillor Owens. Yes, for the first time in almost two years, I have one tonight. Um... At item 7.2 for ECJV's parade permit, I am on that committee, so I will be stepping away for that one. Okay, duly noted. Thank you, Councillor Owens. I should be able to get the last name right today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll uh, start with the uh, public meeting call to order. The purpose of the meeting, Ms. Bilodeau. Let me get my slideshow ready here. Yep. Everyone see that okay? No. Yes, okay. So something new, we're trying our first public meeting at council dealing with the Planning Act application using Zoom. So uh, just to get right into it, we have a zoning bylaw amendment application that was submitted by Norman Gannon and the address of the amendment to take places at 48 McCamus Avenue. Can I interrupt for one second? Sure. I might have touched a button here somehow. I like uh, Casey Owens, but that's all I see. <laughs> what, uh, how do you shrink that? I can't see anybody else. Without seeing your screen, I'm not too sure. Um, possibly with it being shared, can you go anywhere like the top right, perhaps might have a speaker view or a gallery view? Or view, view options? Or yeah, if you go view options, can you go to the bottom that says Answer. side by side? Okay, I've got the 48 McCamas. And, and that's what uh, we're looking at too, Pat. And Casey, so, but I can't see anybody else other than Casey. And I really like Casey, but. <laughs> I'll mail you a picture. <laughs> I'll put it in my wallet. Um, Your Worship, I can keep an eye on the councillors for any questions or or if the councillors uh, would like to speak up, if they have a question, maybe we can go that route. Okay, yeah, rather than hold things up. Okay. And go I ahead, proceed. Yes, okay, thank you. 
so this is an aerial image of the property in question. As you can see, it's a rel relatively large building. It's currently a triplex. The property is zoned residential low to medium density. And the request is for it to go to residential medium density special for the purpose of recognizing the existing triplex as a permitted use within our zoning bylaw. So right now it's likely that that triplex has a or retains a legal non-conforming uh, status. But what happens when we go to the lawyer, some lawyers a little bit more finicky than others. So when we go to, when he goes to sell this land, a triplex will not be listed within the list of permitted uses underneath the residential low to medium density. And the only way to confirm it is, or to ensure that it is listed is to go through a zoning amendment. So that's, that's the purpose of tonight's meeting. There's nothing changing on the property itself. No new construction happening. It's just a recognition of what's already there. So just some pictures from the front, uh, just so you can take a peek at what it looks like. The, um, while we're reviewing the proposed amendment, we did notice that there was some discrepancies with the, the zoning bylaw in terms of lot area, lot frontage, lot coverage, and uh, some setback deficiencies. So we're recognizing that as well as part of this amendment, and that's what gives it its special provision. This is a view from the laneway in the back. So as you can see, there is no parking in the front yard. All of the parking is accessible by the, the, by the rear laneway. So in terms of provincial policy, you'll notice that our, our presentations will now, in our report, sorry, will now reference the provincial policy statement for 2020. This came into effect this month. So not many changes there to note. It's, it's essentially, it's very similar to the 2014 provincial policy statement. Uh, so it, there was no issues there. It is consistent with that document. From an official plan standpoint, there's no concerns. It, uh, it is designated residential, so there's no need for changes there. And as I mentioned previously with the zoning bylaw, there were some things that we had to take into account for this zoning amendment in relation to meeting the lot frontage, lot area, lot coverage, and some setback information or setback requirements as well. So they're all listed there and they're also presented in the planning report. Councillor Owens. Just a quick question concerning the uh, minimum front yard setback. Does this mean that every house in the province that doesn't respect that is going to have to go through a zoning amendment to be able to sell their houses or properties? Through your worship, this is only going to be applicable to this property specific. So the amendment okay. is just relative to this property. Okay, so it's not at large. We're not going to have to go through this every single time, right? No, that's that's right. It, it's possible too that uh, knowing how the banks work and if he's uh, getting a mortgage as a triplex, uh, they want the proper zoning, to, zoning in, in place. That's my gut feeling. So continuing on just with a quick summary, the applicant is intending to sell the property in order to prevent any issues with the sale due to its likely legal non-conforming status the applicant would like to use the building, uh, would like the use of the building recognized under the zoning bylaw. We did mention that uh, the driveway is accessed via the laneway. Uh, the building does not meet the minimum setback requirements for the front side yards, minimum lot frontage, minimum lot air area, and maximum lot coverage. However, there is uh, absolutely no changes happening on site. This is just recognizing what already exists. We did have a planning advisory committee meeting on Thursday and the planning advisory committee did, did proceed with approving or recommending approval for this application. And at this point, I am willing to take any, any questions or if there's any comments. The public was circulated as well, I should mention, and there was, was no feedback that came back. So uh, I, I imagine that there was no issues noted. Any comments from uh, council? Your oh. worship. Councillor Perrier has a question. Go ahead, Councillor Perrier. Okay, I'm just curious. This this uh, is not going to affect us as far as having to do anything to, to upgrade or keep the laneway clear for the snow or that in the in the future. Your worship, no, that's that's correct. It, it'll it'll stay the same as it always has. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
Ms. Bilardo, you confirmed there was no uh, concerns from the public uh, after the notices being sent out? Through your worship, yes, that's correct. There were there were no notices. What we did with the notice of public meeting in order to meet the Planning Act requirements is we invited them to attend our Zoom meeting if they did have any correspondence that they'd like council to know. We also requested that they phone us if there was issues to let us know ahead of time. And we have not received any phone calls with concerns. Any further comments, concerns? Do we now close this public meeting? Can you clarify? Uh, yes, Your Worship, you? sorry. Okay. Public meeting then has ended. Uh, consideration of proposed amendment. Any further discussion? If not, we will go to a motion. The motion moved by Patrick Adams, seconded by Eugene Ivanov. Be it resolved that report number 2020-DEV-027 entitled Zoning Bylaw Amendment 48 McCamus Avenue be received and that staff be directed to prepare and present a bylaw to council to authorize the corporation of the town of Kirkland Lake to rezone, rezone 48 McCamus Avenue from residential low to medium density R2 to residential medium density special R3 special with the following provisions a minimum lot area of 446 square meters, a minimum frontage of 12.1 meters, a maximum lot coverage of 50%, a minimum front yard setback of two meters, and a minimum side yard setback of 0 0.6 meters. Any concerns? None noted. Uh, any opposed? From None noted. Motion uh, carried. Petition, uh, petitions and uh, delegations, none noted. Acceptance of uh, minutes and recommendations. I have a motion moved by Stacey White, seconded by Casey Owen. Be it resolved that council accept the following meeting, or sorry, be it resolved that council accept the minutes of the following meeting. Minutes of the regular meeting of council held May 19th, 2020. Minutes of the special meeting of council held May 26th, 2020. And minutes of the Kirkland Lake Public Library Board held February 20th, 2020. Any further comments? None noted. Any opposed? From council, none noted. Motion carried. Uh, reports of municipal officers and communications. Uh, CAO Richard McGee, COVID-19 update. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Worship. Good evening, members of council, and through you, Your Worship, two members of council. We have a very brief COVID-19 update this evening. And while we appear to be moving towards the opening of the province, I apologize for sounding like a broken record, but we must remain vigilant in this. The social distancing, all of the hygiene practices are working. However, what I'm also going to suggest to members of council and the community, if you Google Czech Republic face mask, you will see a very interesting illustration on their video with respect to all of the social distancing hygiene measures they have put in place in the Czech Republic as we have in Canada. But what they have also done is implement mandatory face mask wearing outside of their homes. So when you're in public, wearing face masks has actually reduced the transmission of COVID-19 significantly in the Czech Republic. And I encourage everyone to look at that. And while we may not wish to wear masks in public, it is perceived that it will make a difference in the spread of COVID-19 as we approach the opening. So worship through you to council, I would strongly recommend this and perhaps Ms. Loge, Ms. Sackrider would wish to comment as well. Even homemade face masks will have an impact. So with that said, Your Worship, 
I'd like to introduce Ms. Loach to give an update on COVID-19 relating to TPR. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McGee. Your worship through you to council. The Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care issued a memo on May 31st surrounding surveillance testing, whereby we are required to continue this testing for all staff effective immediately. It is, a, it is intended that all long-term care home staff be tested at reasonable interval, intervals and at a minimum of twice during the month of June. We are working with Ontario Health to organize this testing. It is not done through our local health unit. Keeping residents and families connected remains a priority. Window visits, FaceTime and Skype are being well utilized. And to touch briefly on Mr. McGee's um, suggestion of wearing face masks, we are um, recommending that our employees wear them when they're out, um, maintain that six foot barrier. We did, have, um, we did have a donation of some masks from um, a local organization and those have been distributed to the staff. Thank you and on to Bonnie. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Loach. Through you, your worship, to council. Two weeks ago, some restrictions were lifted in the province of Ontario as part of phase one of the reopening. And the municipality was able to open the dog park, all parks, the bike park, gazebos, picnic tables, and benches. These are all for individual activities at this time. Auxiliary buildings are not open. And as a reminder to residents who utilize these areas, these areas are available for use at your own risk and are not regularly sanitized. The current emergency orders include the closure of outdoor playgrounds, play structures and equipment, public swimming pools and the splash park. There does continue to be restrictions on social gatherings of more than five people. Finally, as a reminder to all, continue to follow the simple public health guidelines practice physical distancing, wear a mask when it is a challenge to physical distance, and wash your hands regularly. If you think you have COVID-19 or may have been exposed to the virus, get tested. Thank you very much. And next up is Mr. Gorman. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sackreiter, your worship, through you to council. Um, the federal gas tax funding has been accelerated for 2020 in which the federal government is deemed the first step in supporting towns and cities. Uh, typically, we would receive federal gas tax monies in two installments. And in this case, we'll be receiving one payment in June. Uh, we continue to monitor developments in the pandemic pay front. Uh, we've confirmed that it'll be issued through existing transfer payment agreements. Uh, funds will be distributed to employers on an allocation basis and to be reconciled at a later date. There is a target date of June 5th for the funds to begin being transferred. On the 5th, we will be partaking in a webinar to seek further guidance on this subject. If I could pass this over now to Mr. Haas. Can I ask uh, one question, uh, Treasurer Berman? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, did we not get a top up of the gas tax uh, funding last year? And are we getting the same amount as last year? Can um, you clarify that? Thank you, Your Worship. At this time, there's been no top-up announced for 2020. It was a one-time top-up in 2019. The actual first, like the installment that we are entitled to is aligned with last year's at 484,000. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Keith. Um, First item would be a business reopening. We have seen uh, a gradual reopening across the economy. It has been very beneficial for public morale and business morale. However, there is still a lot of concern. What is the future pace of the reopening? Is there a second wave? What happens if uh, the subsidies uh, are starting to be pulled back or withdrawn or canceled? Uh, specific areas of concern within business community, HR management, and uh, as the reopening proceeds, the cost of renovations and uh, uh, 
preventative uh, equipment and materials and supplies, as well, of course, as rent. On our side, uh, the second survey has been completed. There were less responses as we expected. Uh, we will release that soon. Generally, you see a leveling out or uh, strengthening of confidence within the business community, but you have to remember that that is when some of the uh, money first started flowing in uh, a reasonable way. There's also a business directory, a regional one that is up. It's very well populated for the Kirkland Lake area. Um, that's thanks to the uh, Chamber of Commerce and uh, that will be used as an instrument too to keep the public advised as to what happens as the economy reopens and or as COVID uh, returns. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments from uh, Council? We'll have a motion to accept the reports of municipal officers and communication. I have a motion moved by Eugene Ivanov, seconded by Patrick Adams. Be it resolved that the verbal update titled COVID-19 update be received. Any objection from council? None noted. Motion carried. Uh, EC, ECJV request for uh, parade permit. Thank you, Your Worship, through you to Council. Um, through coordinating with uh, the member of the public, their pl plans have changed a little bit and they actually do not require a parade permit anymore, but they do still need a couple of road closures. Um, so I have discussed this with Public Works and Fire and there are no concerns and the applicants are aware that uh, they would be in charge of working with the equipment since it is after hours. Uh, so the request that they have is to close off Duncan and Second Street, Duncan and Hudson Bay, Duncan and O'Mara, and Duncan and Churchill. So basically just trying to close the, that off. So in front of the school for about an hour, uh, there will be no traffic and that is their request. Any comments from uh, Councillor? I would just say uh, kudos to uh, ECJ, ECJV uh, for putting this event on. Uh, and uh, under the circumstances, uh, sounds great. But we have a motion. Motion moved by Dennis Perrier, seconded by Stacey White. Be it resolved that memorandum number 2020-CLK-003 entitled ECJV request for parade permit be received and that staff be directed to coordinate details with the applicant for the temporary road closure of Duncan Ave and 2nd Street East, Duncan Ave and Hudson Bay Ave, and Duncan Ave and Churchill Drive from 6.30 to 8 p.m. on June 17, 2020. Comments from uh, Councillor White. Thank you, I wasn't sure if you could see me, uh, Mayor. Yeah, I just um, was just checking if the uh, town of Kirkland Lake We'll be announcing it on the social media platforms to let the public know that this will be um, closed off during that time. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, we will put a notification on the website and uh, link to that um, from the Town of Kirkland Lake social media accounts. Okay. No further comments. Any objections from council? None noted. Uh, motion carried. Item uh, 7.3, uh, 2020 user fees. Clerk Megan Elliott. Thank you, Your Worship. Through you to council. The current user fee bylaw is in effect until June 30th, 2020. After discussions with staff, we would like to bring forward to continue the same user fees for the remainder of 2020 with a couple of exceptions. The one item that does need a little bit of an increase is the item noted blue carts as part of waste management due to an increased shipping cost. 
Uh, we would like to add a line for a licensing fee for food carts of $250 and a Schedule C be added for equipment rates to be regulated through our user fee bylaw. Comments from uh, Council, Councillor White? Yeah, um, I'm fully in support of keeping them at the 2019 rates. I do want to mention for the second year in a row, our building permit fees are quite out of line with our comparator municipalities. Our minimum sit around $250, where our comparators sit around $65 or less. So um, at which time we do have um, proper staff in place, I would really appreciate looking into this. At this time, if we're going to look into enforcement, um, we're not going to see the amount of people coming in to ensure that the um, changes and renovations they're doing to their properties are safe and up to building codes if we're really, really way out of line in our pricing. So I hope to see this um, re-looked at in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor White. Uh, earlier in the week, there was a question about equipment rentals. I don't know if that was clarified for the rest of council. I am assuming uh, we're not in the rental business, but occasionally a contractor or, a, for example, a plumbing firm need a certain tool and uh, there's nothing else available in town that they can come to the town and we have those fees the rental fees for that purpose is, is that correct? Perhaps you, Mr. Rabardi could answer this, Your Worship. Okay. Thank you, Your Worship. True you to Council. Uh, these rates are basically some services that we do provide, uh, uh, like, like uh, as you well know, snow plowing and grading uh, services for. Uh, Neddy Lake Cottagers Association. So these rates, that's where they will apply. Uh, let's say if um, Hydro One for per se uh, damage the sidewalk, then we'll repair the sidewalk, then we have these rates to, to charge our services. Okay. Thank you uh, for clarifying that. Any further, uh, yes, Councillor Adams. So I would have questions about things like uh, genie man lift. So when would we need to provide that when there's somebody in the town providing a genie man lift already for rentals? We have included all, all the rate or all the equipment that we add just in case we're performing such a task, uh, depending on, on the work activity that we do have to perform, then we do have a, a rate available to us uh, to provide those charges. Do, do we have a policy on these types of rentals? No, I, I, I did it. We did a search and we did not find uh, such, such a policy. Uh, so just as one person, I would only recommend that uh, I myself will not be voting for this item to be included uh, until we either have a policy or we do work with our local business owners and cross off what they don't provide. Uh, so that way we're not in competition as part of on the agenda coming up as part of our strategic plan is to reduce our competition with our, uh, our certainly uh, business owners within the municipality. That's my recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Adams. Uh, Councillor White, did you have your... I actually also believe that a policy should be in place um, stating kind of, uh, sorry, uh, how, yeah, sorry, how it develops, like, is this something that is low on the totem pole? We do our stuff first, and then if the products are available, the equipment is available, then it can be rented, or do we go to make money first and then leave our issues um, second. So until a policy is in place, I think we should hold off on equipment rentals. Uh, Councillor Owens. I just, uh, my computer froze momentarily when Councillor Adams started to work, uh, to speak. Which one does he have an issue with? I didn't get that. Councillor Adams. 
Well, if, if there misses, there's places in town that provide half ton trucks, there's places in town that provide genie man lifts, they provide cube vans. Uh, so there's quite a list on there. So for uh, businesses that don't provide an elegant, elegant, elegant pelican street sweeper, certainly that's something that we can provide. But for other things that are already being provided by other business owners, why are we going to enter that competition? Okay, but to be fair, through you, you, do we actually rent out the truck? Like, it, like it's there as a fee. If we, the way I see it, is if we need to do work, we're not gonna mosey on there with a pair of shoes. We're gonna use a truck, and they're gonna have to pay for the use of that truck. That's how I see it. I don't see it as we rent a truck out to whoever needs it, unless I'm totally wrong on this one. So maybe I can help out, Your Worship. Yep. Yeah. So with respect to the rental fees, there were fees in place in the Public Works Department that were not documented in any authority from council. I requested that Mr. Roberti put those fees to paper and provide them to the clerk for inclusion in the user fees. There's absolutely no intention whatsoever by staff to rent out vehicles genie lifts or anything of the sort, um, unless it was a project related to the town of Kirkland Lake. For instance, the contractor who would be successful in doing the work between Swastika and Kirkland Lake with respect to the water and sewer extensions. If they needed a specialty piece of equipment such as the vac truck, the town would have a mechanism and approved fee by council to actually rent that with an operator to that company for that designated period of time. So I can assure you that staff has no intention whatsoever of competing with the private sector to take business away from those tax paying folk. And, and also, so for instance, I understand in the past that there has been municipal equipment deployed in municipalities or territories outside of the geographic boundaries of Kirkland Lake for the purposes of winter control. And we, we wouldn't be looking to compete with the private sector in those areas either. So if it reassures council at all, um, staff's happy to provide a policy relating to this. And we have quite a list of policies that we, we want to put to paper and put in front of council. But I would recommend that we don't hold um, this up at this point because it doesn't give staff any authority to put a price to equipment rental when we may be assisting another utility for our own purposes. I hope that helps. And with respect to some of the discussion, staff would recommend your worship if council wishes to have staff undertake any work such as um, reviews of policy or things such as that, it should be formalized in a motion. Staff just won't pick up comments from individual members of council through discussion. Um, we need to track it through formal resolution of council. And then we're very aware that council as a corporate body wishes to have that work undertaken by staff. And it makes it easier for me to give direction and assign that work to individual members of staff. If I could respectfully request that. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. Councillor White. No, now that we've received clarification of and the history on these uh, amounts, I see no issue with passing it right now, and I look forward to the policies coming ahead. Councillor Adams. I would motion for a policy to be developed and clarify about the usage of this type of equipment and when it is to be used. Because even for the example of us doing a water project on our roads, uh, I think a private a Badger is able, uh, like Badger is a company that has a vacuum truck is able to provide that service. So I'm just still, it's a gray area for myself. And if it's clarified, uh, that would be better. So I motion for that, if that's the process. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> All right, Councillor Owens. I, I don't get it. So you would, pro through you, your Lordship or worship, whatever. So you would rather we go hire a contractor outside of town when we own the equipment already just for the purpose of providing employment for somebody else when we already own the equipment, we bought it. I don't get it, like this seems like a waste of time. Councillor Adams. 
So we have many projects that we would use that Badger truck for with our sewers. So if we have a project that need, somebody else needs to use that project, they're using our maintenance money. So as long as that is perfectly clarified in a policy, I'd be very happy with that. Thank you. Councillor Perry. I'd just like to add that uh, by renting this stuff out to other, other contractors or other people, we're putting more wear and tear on these pieces of equipment. Exactly. So we're going to have to be the ones that are, that are going to end up paying for this. So I think it's a, lo a losing cause myself. Thank you. I, I think one of the things, uh, we're not actively going out there soliciting this. No. And uh, I think uh, CEO Rick uh, mentioned, uh, for example, the uh, water and sewer lines coming in from Swastika to Kirkland Lake. We have a contractor in the middle of a job and uh, might need a piece of equipment for a couple hours. Rather than holding up the job, uh, that we, uh, we assist by uh, uh, renting the equipment to them. Uh, but I agree, we, we're not going out there actively soliciting but I think we should uh, clarify uh, the issue. I don't have any problem with it today personally, but I think we have to have a policy in place to clarify. Uh, there will be the occasion where a contractor will come to us and uh, at least now we, have, we could have rates in, in place and be able to uh, meet that demand if it was felt uh, warrants it. So do we have any other comments or concerns from council? Do we have a motion, uh, Councillor White? Yeah, so I'd like to second the motion. If this is the way we're doing things now, um, it appears that you also support the motioning to bring, to instruct CAO and staff to bring forth a um, policy on this. So I would definitely second Councillor Adams to bring forth a policy if that's the way we're now doing things. Thank you, Councillor White. So through you, Your Worship, to Council, the current motion is uh, moved by Casey Owens and seconded by Dennis Perrier. So if the mover would like to amend that motion. I would. I no, I I don't because right now that motion is just for the um the fees, right? That's all we're if they want a separate motion, then it's going to be on a separate motion on this one. I oh, okay. I personally don't want to change this one. This one can stay as it is. We need to pass this before pass the second the deadline. Yeah. Okay. Pass the second motion after Mr. McGee gets back to us. Okay. So your worship, if we go for the first motion and then we can do the next one. Okay. Motion moved by Casey Owen, seconded by Dennis Perrier. Be it resolved that memorandum number 2020-CLK-002 entitled 2020 user fees be received. That staff be directed to present a bylaw to council at the June 16th, 2020 regular meeting of council to establish the 2020 user fees at the same level as the 2019 user fees with the exception of blue carts to increase by $5. That the 2020 user fees include the addition of a licensing fee of $250 for food carts on Schedule B Administration Division. That an additional Schedule C be added entitled Equipment Rates. And that bylaw number 18-147 being a bylaw to establish user fees for 2019 be repealed. Do we have any objections from Council? Objection noted. Councillor Adams. Motion carried. Okay, so we have a motion moved by Patrick Adams, second by Stacy White. Be it resolved that staff be directed to prepare an equipment rental policy. Any objection from uh, council? None noted. Motion carried. Thank you. Item 7.4, uh, Tech Township Wood uh, Harvesting Summary Report, Mr. Haas. 
Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Your Worship. The purpose of the report is to update Council on the additional timber harvesting approved in February. The project is complete, but due to weather and incorrect uh, resources inventories, the revenues realized totaled approximately $35,000 instead of the estimated $39,000. Staff recommends that the revenues be allocated to the community improvement plan, uh, that that uh, recommendation. Staff also recommends that the revenues realized in the harvesting activity that took place in Tech Township in early 2020 also be allocated to the community improvement plan. Those revenues are approximately $70,000. Thank you. Comments from uh, Council? Councillor Adams. Yes, for the uh, community improvement plan, how much money is currently available within that program? The CIP was adopted by Council in June of 2019 and implementation was deferred to 2020. The recommended budget was $50,000 annually. Final version of the 2020 budget is to have the monies allocated from the additional harvesting activities plus the recommendation of the uh, $50,000 to be removed from general surplus and put towards the CIP. So until the budget is passed, obviously it's nothing. Pa um, the, sorry, I, I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Uh, Councillor White. So of course, this is something that we uh, should definitely support. There was quite a few um, inquiries before we had money in the CIP program last year. So this is excellent. Um, and I look forward to seeing the results of what these grants will do for the business owners. Um, and property owners in town. Um, I do have a question. Um, if we could include it in the report was um, the forestry plan volume one from 2012. I was wondering if we could also get the companion to that, which is the land management agreement for private land volume two, Roscoe Forestry Operations and Partners. Um, if that could be or, or sent to council for those members of the public or council that would like to read it. For you, Your I Worship. I require a motion to, to get that posted. Uh, through you, Your Worship, there is um, no formal volume two. When the project was put together, Roscoe was supposed to be doing the, uh, um, the plan for ourselves, Kirk Lake Gold, and a number of other players. They, carry, they carried it out for about, let's say about six, seven months, and then went their own way. We had pub, uh, funding from the senior levels of government, so we completed the public sector side of it. They're more than likely they do have plans that they have in front of the government that they adhere to, but it's not part um, of this. It was supposed to be a second volume, that's why it was still in the title. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. If I may add, uh, Mr. Haas, uh, you're aware we are working on uh, other sources of funding uh, for the uh, CIP that would not affect the tax levy. Uh, that's still in the works. We do not have a response yet. We hope to soon. Uh, it'd be nice to be able to top that up, especially with uh, COVID, uh, a lot of businesses are finding it very difficultly difficult and uh, in some cases may have to reinvent themselves so uh, we will continue to work on that process and i think the other thing uh, mr house is to get the administration aspect of this uh, it has been delayed somewhat a lot due to the covid situation but to get the administration aspect of it uh, put in place so that uh, formal applications can be taken. I believe now we have more like verbals or uh, letters of, uh, of interest, but nothing formal. So uh, that's something we have to get in place uh, uh, in order to make this uh, uh, process work. Uh, through you, your work, we do have a proper application form. Uh, that is distributed and so available or will be available on a new website. I think it, it is available on the existing one. I'm not sure. Um, companies that have made inquiries 
uh, this is one item uh, that they consider in what they're planning to do. It's uh, usually this is the latter part of their uh, business development. Okay, I wasn't aware of that, and I wasn't. Uh, I don't think council has been aware of the adjudication process as to uh, the app or approval. So, am I correct in that? Mr. Haas? Yeah, I, sorry, sir, you were uh, breaking up there quite a bit. Uh, yes, we have the application form. We have not received any applications yet. They are with companies, but they have not submitted anything. With COVID, I think you can expect that that will be a delay yet, too. Any further comments? None noted. A motion. I have a motion moved by Dennis Perrier, seconded by Eugene Ivanoff. Be it resolved that report number 2020-ED-004 entitled Tech Township Wood Harvesting Summary Report be received that staff be directed to allocate funds from the revenue realized from harvesting TKL blocks 13 and 14, totaling $35,033 to the Community Improvement Plan, and that staff be directed to allocate funds from the revenue realized from harvesting TKL blocks 15, 16, 17, totaling $70,654 to the Community Improvement Plan. Any objections uh, from councillors? None noted. Motion carried. Item 7.5, request to lease land. Ms. Villado. Thank you, Worship. Through you to council, we received a request to lease land across from 35 Premier Avenue East. The individuals were using the land and it was noted by our bylaw enforcement officer. So notice was sent to them that they were utilizing the land without our permission. Uh, through that process, we did uh, formulate a lease agreement, which is being considered in the bylaw, for, uh, bylaw section of tonight's meeting. Uh, essentially, it'll be there to, to be able to accommodate his recreational vehicles on the property. The lease agreement does have a stipulation within it that allows us to cancel the lease within 60 days notice. And it also has a statement within it to, to ensure that the property is kept in a tidy and clean condition. Any comments from uh, council? None noted. Motion. I have a motion moved by Patrick Adams, seconded by Stacy White. Be it resolved that report number 2020-DEV-024 entitled Request to Lease Land Across 35 Premier Avenue East be received. That staff be directed to present a bylaw to council to enter into a lease agreement with the owners of 35 Premier Avenue East and that the lease agreement shall stipulate the requirement to keep the property in a good and tidy condition. Any opposition from council members? None noted. Motion carried. Item 7.6, request to purchase uh, to Premier Avenue East. Continue, Ms. Bilderdal. Thank you, Your Worship. Through you to council, we received a request to purchase for 2 Premier Avenue East for $200. This property was recently vested through tax sale process and declared surplus. It is the intent of this individual to demolish the structure and utilize it as additional space for the garage that's right beside. So there has been a request to waive the tipping fees associated with uh, the demolition of this project. Uh, I do have it currently in the budget uh, for $10,000 for the municipality to become involved in demol demolishing this, uh, this structure. So with the $200 uh, income from the property and the waiver of tipping fees, we're looking at about a $6,700 um, savings if, if we proceed with the sale. So we did request that a provision be added to have the building demolished within one month from closing and failure to do so will result in the town going in to demolish the structure as it, it does pose a health and safety concern and is currently a property standards issue. Any comments from uh, council? Councilor Owens. You almost got it wrong then, didn't you? Um, <laughs> what provisions do we have in place 
to make sure that once this property is sold and if he decides to go past that 30 day mark and we have to end up going in there and clean it up, how do we get the money back? Like we can't, inf this is where I'm, I'm afraid we can't even enforce half of the derelict buildings that are falling apart right now. We've got no bite, we've got no mechanism in place to enforce it. So how does this one work? What's the difference between this one and the rest of the buildings in Kirkland that need to be demolished? Uh, through, through you, your worship, I can answer this. So this, what we intend to do is add it in the purchase and sale agreement. So there'll be a condition within that purchase and sale agreement that stipulates it has to be done within the 30 days. Failure to do so will result in the town doing it. And we will add that bill to tax roll if it comes down to it. So we will collect it in the manner of taxes. Councillor White. Eugene can go first. He hasn't spoken at all tonight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask if, uh, if this is a zone commercial or if it's going to be rezoned commercial if he's using it part of his business. It's through your worship. It's currently residential, and having reviewed the zoning, I'm not and, and talked to the owner. I don't think it'll have a need to go commercial at this time, but if it does in the future, we'll look at that. Thank you, Councillor White. Okay. Um, sorry, Ashley, at the time, will we, will it have to come back to council if this individual doesn't follow through or will your department be able to just move ahead with the demolition? Through your worship, because the condition is stipulated in the purchase and sale agreement that was signed off by council, there's no need to come back. So we will proceed and get it done. <laughs> Any other concerns or comments? Maybe your worship on that note, if Ms. Bilodeau could just uh, highlight uh, for council's purposes that um, staff will be utilizing some new techniques with respect to the removal of derelict buildings. And uh, it might be helpful being online uh, during the council meeting just to advise council of what uh, strategies she'll be using going forward. Thank you, Mr. McGee. So we did have a initial meeting. We finally met our building consultant yesterday who resides in Kitchener, but was up to do inspections. And we had a great chat with him about property standards. So uh, in order to bring ourselves a little bit more teeth, we're planning on using sections of the building code and referring to uh, provincial legislation to have properties cleaned up and potentially demolished versus going through property standards, which I was just it was described as more of a fluffy document. <laughs> so we do anticipate seeing quite a few demolitions happening this summer, which I'm very excited about. I'm not gonna make promises on which ones, but uh, we do have someone very proactive and going to take that, that necessary role to see some movement this year. That is certainly welcome news to council. Uh, we have a motion. For any further comments? Sorry, Councillor uh, Ivanov. I'd just like to make the comment that we should probably be looking at, this is a great situation for us. We're gonna save a bit of money. If other property owners have derelict buildings next to them, it would be nice to have those buildings in possession of the community so we can offer them to the neighbors who are close to these ugly falling apart buildings and they can take advantage of tearing them down on their own. We don't have to be involved in the demolition. Uh, you know what? For giving somebody a bit of uh, landfill tipping fees is great for us instead of having to get our, our people involved and hiring somebody to uh, tear down these uh, derelict buildings. And, you know, if, if you get two property owners and they want to split a lot, it would be amazing to have some of those properties cleaned up and, uh, and, and open up some building lots. Yep. Councillor White. Absolutely. I couldn't nod my head strong enough um, to reiterate how pleased I am, um, especially because uh, Mayor um, Kylie and myself have been talking about this from day one, as well as other council members, uh, the need to get rid of these buildings. And Eugene's idea is brilliant. If we can um, unload them on next door neighbors, that would be fabulous. I know uh, in my own family, we've had an empty lot for 40 years that we used tax-free until this year. So um, nice. that's amazing. Yeah, I mean, it was sitting there. We did the grass, we did everything. And yet for 30 years, we could have been paying taxes. 
So, um, yeah, so this is brilliant. And thank you very much for all the hard work that you've done towards getting rid of these derelict buildings. It's absolutely brilliant, Ashley. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Stacey. Have have just another comment. I just wanted to stipulate that th this is going to form part of the strategic plan. So I am going to get to that next. But uh, that property standards plan that's going to conjoin with taxes and bring it all together, it is exactly looking at stuff like that. Uh, Councilor Ivanov, it's it's finding vacant lots that you can make use of and marketing it so that it makes it attractive for people to buy and push it forward as quickly as we possibly can. So it is definitely our intent. And I think we're on the right track. Great news. Councilor Ivanov? Yeah, I might clean up some of our parking issues in the wintertime, too, if people actually have property they can park their cars on instead of on the road and boulevards and uh, sidewalks. Certainly. Uh, we have a motion. I have a motion moved by Eugene Ivanov, seconded by Dennis Perrier. Be it resolved that report number 2020-DEV-026, entitled Request to Purchase to Premier Avenue East, be received. That staff be directed to present a bylaw to council to authorize the corporation of the town of Kirkland Lake to enter into an agreement of purchase and sale for the property known as 2 Premier Avenue East to Real and Debbie Roy for a sale price of $200. That the purchase and sale agreement reflect that the town of Kirkland Lake will waive the tipping fees associated with the demolition. And that the purchase and sale agreement shall reflect a condition to demolish the building within one month of transfer and that failure to do so will result in the municipality arranging for demolition and charging back to the property owner. Any comments? None noted. No up any opposition from uh, Council. None noted. Motion carried. Item 7.7, .7, strategic plan. Continue, Ms. Bilodeau. Thank you, yeah, thank Worship. You. Worship. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. That's okay, Your Worship. Uh, I, I just want to jump in here with respect to the uh, protocol prior to Ms. Bilodeau's fantastic presentation of the strategic plan. If Council refers to the recommendation, staff is recommending that the strategic plan with any amendments be recommended to the June 16th to allow time for council to absorb um, the changes they're recommending the plan in its entirety unless council wanted to approve it this at this evening's meeting of course but if you look at the recommendation the mover and seconder could put that forward and then members of council could make any recommended amendments underneath that and if they were friendly to the mover and seconder it should compile a master main motion that will provide staff with all the details that they require to bring forward the finalized product of the strategic plan to the June 16th meeting. And if council wishes to put it off until July, that is entirely council's prerogative as well, your worship. And I now return to Ms. Bilodeau and uh, the presentation of the strategic plan. Thank you. Mr. Nico, what I just want to emphasize is that this is the, a new technology, so I hope that it's going to work. It's beautiful at my end. Hopefully, it'll be just as beautiful on YouTube and uh, on your screens. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen. It, the video is about seven minutes long, and after that, we'll kind of go through some any kind of comments or questions you may have regarding the intent of the plan, the purpose of the plan, or the implementation of it. Sound good? All right, let's give this a try. Move forward. Is that visible at all? Not yet. Is that full screen? Let's see if it works. The following presentation is a brief explanation on Calvin's proposed strategic plan. A strategic plan is the organization's process of defining its strategy or direction and making decisions on allocating its resources to pursue the strategy. 2018, New Council was elected with an intent to review existing municipal functions and to create an environment to help the town achieve sustainable service delivery. In spring of 2019, Strategy Corp was engaged to complete a strategic plan and organizational review. 
In December of 2019, Strategy Corp presented a draft report, including a draft strategic plan. However, no final document was finalized or approved. Today, staff are presenting the draft report for Council's consideration. The strategic plan represents a year-long collaborative process to develop a collective vision and strategic direction for the municipality over the next four years. It articulates the work Council wishes to achieve and how staff will work towards those goals. It provides a framework for establishing and reviewing identified priorities to assist with managing the allocation of limited resources to the initiatives of greatest impact and benefit. This is made up of a vision, mission, and strategic priorities that define the vision and measure success of the municipality. The intent of the plan is to provide a roadmap for decision making. The proposed vision of this strategic plan is Kirkland Lake, a proud, prosperous, and sustainable community. The proposed mission is our corporation is a model of public service done right. And the taxpayers have the confidence in what we do and the value they are getting for their taxes. The plan is further broken down into four strategic priorities, what we identify as pillars that consist of providing sustainable operational excellence, building the team, providing outstanding service, and promoting economic growth. See how this fits together. The following slide identifies the vision, mission, and pillars that will become the focus for staff and council. Action items will be developed to remain consistent and in line with the areas of focus. The next few slides will focus on breaking down the pillars into action items. Pillar one, achieve sustainable operational excellence. Areas of focus include aiming for financial sustainability, policy development and implementation, better management of capital assets, improving communication, and finding and implementing efficiencies. As part of this plan, we will be focusing on building reserves, implementing long-term capital spending plans and replacement strategies, conducting cost analyses on contracted work and leases, and enhancing our competitiveness with other municipalities by reviewing our taxes and user fee structures. We will also be developing SOPs and building our policy database by introducing new and revising existing policies, such as our tax collection policy, reserves, reserve fund policy, and debt management policy. We will work towards implementing a capital asset management plan, a fleet management plan, and also analyze the need for the department. We intend to share outcomes of council themes develop and implement communication policy, identify and implement software to assist the document and establish weekly management meetings. All right, just pause it for a second. I'm gonna give it a second to get it going. Management meetings. Under the Sustainable Operational Excellence Pillar, we intend to assess contracted services, leases, and rental agreements, make best use of our efficiency funding, improve our technology, implement our fire master plan recommendations, and provide a centralized information technology department. Pillar two, build the team. This plan also identifies the need to improve accountability to the public, Council with initiatives for success. The plan sets the goal to develop key performance indicators that can be tracked and measured on a quarterly basis and to enhance and improve the efficiency of our geographic information system. The plan also identifies the need to bring a budget for the following year in Q4. Our intent with the plan is to develop initiatives that will put Kirkland Lake on the map and promote economic growth. Council will play its role by engaging constituents in decision making and advocating regionally and provincially at conferences. We are going to establish opportunities for cross training and develop a training plan and policy. We also intend to establish attraction and retention plans for employees and review our performance management process. We are going to finalize our organizational review, update job descriptions, evaluations, and look at pay equity. Our intent is to develop a succession plan and a training plan and recruit for vacant positions. Pillar three, providing outstanding service. 
The plan focuses attention on implementing sustainable service delivery, developing better communication and enhanced openness and transparency, while also improving the health and safety for staff and the public. We intend to look at alternative payment options such as credit card and e-transfers. We also intend to develop service delivery standards and improve our accessibility. We would like to implement a customer service relations system and develop a communications policy. As previously mentioned, we intend to develop QPI templates and present on a quarterly basis. We also intend to launch our new website in the coming weeks. Improving your health and safety to staff and the public is very important. We intend to do this through educational prevention methods. We also plan on implementing a home and business inspection program and introducing a property standards plan or program. Our last pillar is promoting economic growth. There are two areas of focus underneath the pillar of promoting economic growth, including investing in Kirkland Lake and reducing competition with the private sector. We want to promote Kirkland Lake by supporting local businesses, leveraging their existing strengths, and making Kirkland Lake profitable. We also want to analyze where competition exists and reduce that competition to the private sector. Looking back to the original grants, the LP annual business to co I'm assuming it's because it's a pretty big file and it's a little choppy going through the internet. So I'm just kind of giving it time to load here. I apologize for that. It does not sound like that <laughs> regularly when we tried it. It just seems to be through Zoom. Personal business plans to coincide with the strategic plan to target objectives departmentally. Once the strategic plan is adopted, decision making will now be funneled through a series of questions to ensure that council and staff are remaining consistent and in line with strategic directions. It will be important for this document to be measured regularly. Staff are proposing an annual report that includes key areas of focus, a matrix of accomplishments, a profile of major accomplishments, major community initiatives that occurred during the reporting year, and in order to maintain momentum, an analysis of what will be targeted in the following year. Council and the public may ask, why is this important? This document will measure and track success. It is goal and objective driven. It encourages collaboration. It's a plan for strategic decision making. It maintains openness and transparency to the public and is considered a roadmap for the future. of a strategic plan will bring efficiencies to the town and will get us closer to our goal of sustainable operations. At this time, we would like to entertain any questions that council may have in regards to this plan and the process of implementation. Okay, so we, we apologize for the choppiness of that. <clears throat> And through you, Your Worship, uh, we did mute everybody's mics just for a little bit less feedback. So please just realize you'll have to press unmute. You got to press unmute, Pat. Got it. Your mic's off. There you are. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Is that Councillor Ivanov? That yeah. Good. I'd like to say first of all, it's a great presentation. I like it. I think it's uh, it's the direction we're heading. It's like a wish list for uh, for this council. Uh, the only thing that I'd like to see, and I'm not sure it might have been in there, uh, Ashley, was our connections with uh, provincial and federal governments. I don't see. I'd like to have those guys at council. I'd like to have their feet to the fire because I think we get too little recognition from our MP and our MPP. Uh, I, I know Attawapiskat's a great place to be uh, for for the native kids, and they, you know, and that's where uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, politicians spend a lot of their time. I'd like to have them come to Kirkland Lake and spend some time here, uh, and and come to council and talk to us. 
free of your worship, there is a there is a statement within there that uh, that does emphasize that. Uh, it, it's, it's, I think it's under council's initiatives for success. So that's just the intent of having council reach out to uh, provincial and federal agencies, head down to provincial and federal conferences and, and drum up some of that business to bring them here to, to get us uh, working alongside them and taking advantage of funding opportunities that are available. So that is in there and we can definitely add to that to, to capture what you had mentioned. Yeah, I, I think they should be at council. Those guys should come to our council and talk to us. Both. I, I think uh, I agree with you 100%, Councillor Ivanov. Uh, not necessarily this council, but I, I would say past council have uh, haven't pursued that to the extent that they probably should have. Uh, we're not going to cry for sport uh, spilled milk, but uh, uh, you make a very valid point. Uh, they do show up at some of the committee meetings. I, I would uh, <coughs> certainly uh, from the <coughs> provincial representation, but uh, I think we need a more uh, aggressive, not aggressive approach, but uh, bring them to the table. Let us know what's going on, what their thoughts are, where we're going. So uh, point well taken. Uh, Councillor Perrier. Um, I might have missed it, but uh, was there a timeline given for all this to take place? Through your worship, I actually did not include that in the PowerPoint, and you're right, it should have, it should have been mentioned. It is a four-year document. Strategic plans are typically four years long. So yes, there is a timeline. Yeah, thank you. So then normally this would tie into the full term of a regular council four-year term, but that was the intent? Through your worship, we actually looked at it as an advantage so that your priorities and the things that you're identifying in your strategic plan will actually carry through to the next council so that we can see some continuity with some of these areas where are that are going to extend beyond the uh, the four years of your term. I think that's a good point because uh, coming in as a new council, uh, you don't want to start right from uh, start all over again. So, uh, well, uh, well thought out. Uh, Councillor Adams. Uh, yeah, so I think this is the opportunity as well for us to uh, make recommendations as to what we would like to add or bring forward as well. If I get that right, it certainly was a great presentation. Uh, for, so for an item, I think I, the friend I have to make is Councillor White would be achieve sustainable operational excellence. And in, in this area, policy development and implementation I think a standard that we can maybe set as a policy is ensuring that we have one to two policies brought to council every uh, council meeting. Uh, certainly, uh, I reviewed some of them that haven't been reviewed for a while. And if we were to have a process in place that has one minimum uh, brought to council to at least be reviewed, uh, we can make sure that we get our stamp on, especially because some of our policies say that it will be reviewed within a year and that we can make sure that we hit that measurable fact so uh <laughs> something that you would support so i would motion would you second uh do we need a motion or this uh i, I guess to determine whether we're going to accept the strategy the, the plan today or move it uh, forward with uh, uh, amendments or additions as the next meeting and, and we would like to see, as you mentioned, this uh, included Councillor Adams. Yep. So that's a recommendation to be brought forward to the next meeting. Um, so I would motion for that to be added. And being somebody that is already set up to motion and then Councillor White is somebody to second, I think as long as I need her support, that can be added for the next meeting. If I can suggest your worship, if council is okay with the mover and seconder of the main motion, which is to receive and to recommend to the next meeting with the following amendments, then that might help. And if the mover and seconder are okay with what each councilor suggests, then that one main motion can be put forward as amended from a friendly perspective and voted upon. If the mover and seconder refuse a particular councillor's 
friendly amendment, <laughs> then that may then that may be the opportunity for the the member proposing the amendment to put it forward formally. So it may just save a little bit of voting and a little bit of procedural wrangling if the mover and seconder are okay with everything that's being proposed by each member of council, if that helps. How does that sound? Councillor? Yep. So through you, your worship to council, just as a heads up for this motion, the mover is Stacy White and the seconder is Patrick Adams. <coughs> Councillor White, Councillor Adams, are you in favor of that uh, suggestion? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Sounds good. There's more. <laughs> We're listening. Uh, seconder, Stacy White, I mean, Councillor White, for the item of uh, assess contracted services, leases, rental priors to expiry to ensure maximum efficiency and best use of taxpayers dollars. I think an item to be included within that would possibly be for our contracted snow removal. Uh, certainly one of the processes when we were going to our strategic review was review other municipalities and one of the common recommendations was have set uh, routes for contracted services. The benefit to that would be that you would have reduced labor costs as well as reduced maintenance costs on your fleet. Uh, that can be something that can be assessed, uh, certainly not implemented but at least assessed. Is that something that would be seconded? <coughs> I so move, I so second. Oh, thank you. I certainly am in favor of that. Uh, we did some contracting a couple of years ago. Unfortunately, we didn't get an economic uh, report as to the success of it, uh, but comments from the, uh, uh, the community in, that, in those particular areas, and I believe it was Chappies and Swastika, we're, we're very favorable, but the ball got dropped. So I think it's time to pick up the ball and figure out, is it efficient and economically feasible to do? So I agree totally. Councillor White. So I do have a question about our vision in the document. It does uh, refer to Pride of the North. So is this including a rebranding? There will no longer be um, the tagline, the right environment? So thank you, Your Worship. Through you to Council, I, I think that's an important question that Council should look at from the standpoint of what do you want Kirkland Lake to be? from a visionary perspective and uh, whatever that tagline is whatever your aspirations are that's exactly what a vision is the mission is more what do we want to accomplish and and I will always suggest to you and not everybody would agree that the the shorter the better so the most well-known uh, vision statement mission statement in in existence today is the LA County Sheriff. If you're aware of what that is, it's four words to serve and protect. And it's as simple as that. So pride of the North or whatever your aspiration is, is, is really key for council to kind of come up with. And you may want to put that off at this point to think about it. Councillor White. So this had been addressed during our consultations and I believe that had the support of council members that we could not afford at this time to completely rebrand our municipality. Um, I believe that um, council member Owens would understand the cost of rebranding um, stationary down to everything. There is a cost to that. And at this time, I don't understand why we can't um, follow our um, mission and our pillars under that tagline of the right environment. I know it was meant to be recycling and, and environmental in that respect. However, the right environment can be the right environment to live and play and become the pride of the North. Well stated. Any other, uh, uh, Councillor Adams? 
Uh, just one more in policy development and implementation. When the RFP was released, one of the uh, issues that I was identified was uh, staff having a significant amount of uh, holidays being carried over year after year. Uh, something that I, I wouldn't mind having a policy to be reviewed and ensure is enforced is uh, the carryover of holidays, as that is a, a bit of a liability if we were to, like, as an example, lose three employees with uh, six months of holidays, we would have to be paying that out right away. So there should be a policy in place for a holiday. That was something that was identified in the RFP and something that can be identified within policy development and implementation is review of a holiday policy. Thank you. So, so perhaps through you, your worship to council, the, the holiday policy, the carryovers, the bank time liabilities that exist with the organization. Simply put, the policy in place wasn't being followed. So I can advise council that direction has been given to all management and plans are in place to reduce that uh, fiscal liability in 2020 and in some extenuating circumstances in 2021 where those vacation banks or bank time is extensive. So I can advise council that management is looking to reduce that liability and bring it into conformity with the existing uh, policy that is in place. Thank you. And to add to that, Mr. Meeky, that is actually in the strap plan already as well. Okay. To uh, CAO Rick, uh, it, would it be fair to say that we've implement, implemented uh, uh, and encouraged staff uh, as we as of today or uh, since the COVID uh, nineteen situation uh, was thrown upon us? So it is in the works uh, to, to some extent to catch up, uh, use up some of that, uh, uh, that back time that, uh, I mean, it, it's not gonna happen overnight, but uh, that was a start, I, I believe a good opportunity to uh, implement that. That is correct, your worship. And I can advise uh, council through you that direction is has been clearly given and everyone is working diligently to reduce that liability and there are a few circumstances where the liability is so extensive that there's concern it would create business continuity issues if it was resolved in 2020 so the CAO has the authority to uh, approve overages uh, on an annual basis and I do have the plans in place from two employees to resolve those issues into 2021. And, and I, I have to be fair and reasonable, recognizing the liabilities that were inherited, um, that we have to be judicious in this and, and be fair to the employees as well. Uh, just one other comment, <clears throat> when we were talking about policies and uh, policy and procedures, uh, over the past, the previous council and uh, some of our, during our term, uh, there have been uh, requests uh, coming to council to, uh, for the CAO to waive a small fee or to uh, change a, a fee for an extenuating circumstances or for uh, especially during the sports, uh, uh, I forget the actual program name, but sports uh, uh, program that we were promoting. Uh, I, I just think we are a 30 some, $37 million uh, corporation. And I believe if we're going to look at policy and procedure that some leeway should be given uh, with the CAO having an approval limit without coming to council uh, for small items. I can recall $50 items coming to, uh, to council. Uh, I feel that's uh, kind of ridiculous if we, uh, we ask uh, our CAO to run a $37 million operation and have to come to council for $50 approval. So. Uh, I would ask that you put uh, some of that uh, 
thought process process uh, to come up with a, a policy in that area as well. Thank, thank you, Worship. One of the things staff has been tasked with at this point is looking at a delegation of authority bylaw in accordance with the Municipal Act. And I'll give you, for instance, on this evening's agenda, the closure of the street to support ECJV, that's an item that typically in many municipalities is delegated to the Director of Public Works because the Director of Public Works needs the authority to close streets in many circumstances for maintenance, for accidents, for different purposes. This would be a prime example where the delegation of authority bylaw and a policy would support the Director making that decision and supporting that community and allowing council to deal with much more pressing issues such as your strategic plan. I agree. Uh, Councillor Ivanov. You're muted. I say it's a parade permit that was the issue, wasn't it? And not the uh, closure of the street. Is that the, if I recall? Do they still come to council for a parade permit like it has been in the past whatever number of years? Or is that something that somebody else would be looking after? Through you, Your Worship, we would, we would recommend that that would be something within the purview of the Director of Public Works to look at road closures, parade permits, items such as that. Do I bet we have any other uh, comments from uh, Council Councillor White? This is just um, a suggestion. Right now, it's called Council Strategic Plan, and I really don't feel that that um, shows the collaborative effort that was given through consultants, frontline staff, administration, and the little input we had. I mean, the team um, and all of our staff really pulled together to make this possible. We may have come up with some ideas of transparency and financial accountability, but it was really staff that took it and ran with it. And I really think the, the title of this strategic plan should reflect that more than the seven of us. So I'd really like it to be retitled the Town of Kirkland Lakes plan rather than just councils. Thank you, Councillor White. Any other uh, comments, uh, Councillor Adams? Uh, through your worship to Councillor White. So Councillor White, would you motion for that to be amended? Yes, sir, I do. I think I second that. That's a good idea. Thank you. Any further comments? We'll have a motion. You can wrap that all up into one. <laughs> okay, so I have a motion moved by Stacy White, seconded by Patrick Adams. Be it resolved that the draft strategic plan be received and that Council for the Corporation of the Town of Kirkland Lake recommends the approval of the strategic plan to the June 16, 2020 regular meeting of Council with the following amendments. That one or more policies be presented to Council for a regular meeting for review that staff assess contracted snow removal and that the title of the strategic plan be renamed to the town of Kirkland Lake strategic plan. Councillor Owens. Does it have to come back or is there any way to just pass this tonight and get it done and over with? Because I, I misunderstood or might have gotten lost in the, the, the breakup there at the start of the, when uh, the CEO was presenting that there, we could pass this tonight. Through you, your worship, if uh, the mover and seconder wish to amend the motion to pass tonight, we can do that. Councillor White. Sorry, I have no issues with passing this evening because it has been ongoing since December. However, that is that the one outstanding issue of the vision, which is pride, um, pride of the North right now, um, that is what's in the strategic plan and I um, don't want that. So I don't know if anybody else has any ideas, but I would like to stay with the right environment 
and work to way towards that using the mission and the pillars that are in this plan. It's a motion, if I have a seconder, to keep it at the right environment. I would second it. One with a smile. Councillor White, I would second that as the second uh, motioner on that item. Uh, but I would like to have this come back just it's within two weeks. We've made some changes. Uh, we require public input. Just listen to what they have to say. Uh, because we do represent the public as a stewardship position. So we made some changes, see if we get feedback. And within two weeks, it's going to be uh, the ball's rolling. So based on what uh, our CAO has pretty much said is the ball has been rolling already with many of these items with the targets that are already in place. So with a couple additions and two weeks. I would uh, <clears throat> go along and agree with that as well. Uh, another two weeks is not going to hurt, and then it'll be finalized, and everything that we suggested uh, can be uh, included. For your worship, I have a I have a question for council. Are you comfortable with me speaking? Okay. So for you to council, uh, the mission in the actual strategic plan document, there was three that were mentioned in there in the presentation. I recommended that we went with our corporation as a model of public service done right and the taxpayers have the confidence in what we do and the value they are getting for taxes. Is this the direction that council's comfortable with or are you wanting to advise or review those three that were presented in the report and select one for me? Any comments? I, th I don't think we're changing the overall intent uh, and content of the uh, uh, of the plan itself. I think we're just ensuring some uh, some of council's uh, concerns that should be included. They might be generalized in in uh, in some sections that you've already uh, included, but uh, just to clarify that 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 is in there, uh, then we can move on quickly, uh, Councillor Adams. Yes, so I uh, understand what uh, Ms. Bilodeau is saying. So for a vision, Kirkland Lake is a proud, prosperous and sustainable community in the hub of the North. People are happy to live here and put down roots in Kirkland Lake. Uh, I would support that because that's the one of the two options. And then for the mission, the one that uh, Ms. Bilodeau has selected as our corporation is the model, well, she's recommended. Uh, I, I believe that certainly is a, a good choice as well. Okay. So are we going with accepting the report or waiting till June 16th? So through you, your worship to Councillor Adams, just looping back to for the vision statement currently in the motion is to make it as the right environment. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll reread the motion. Uh, so moved by Stacey White, seconded by Patrick Adams, be it resolved that the draft strategic plan be received and that Council for the Corporation of the Town of Kirkland Lake recommends the approval of the strategic plan to the June 16th, 2020 regular meeting of Council with the following amendments. That one or more policies be presented to Council at every regular meeting for review. That staff assess, assess contracted snow removal. That the title of the strategic plan be titled the Town of Kirkland Lake Strategic Plan, that the vision statement be the right environment, and that the mission statement be option number three listed in the strategic plan or in the draft strategic plan. And just on that note, Your Worship, we'll actually take that option three and put it right in the motion so that it's captured in the minutes for ever in a day. Any, any objections? None noted. Motion carried. Uh, item number 8.1, dump uh, protocol. Councillor White. Do you have any comments on that? Uh, sorry, I didn't, I wasn't prepared. 
to speak on it again. Um, I do believe that a policy does uh, need to be presented as always and policy, policy, policy. Um, it has come to our attention um, and several members of council have spoken about issues at uh, the dump in recent months and, and over the last year. Um, I too have experienced some interesting um, experiences um, at that location and I feel that it's important. We're proposing to, to give council um, iPads to modernize the way we, we work together, yet our members of our staff that are dealing with the public day in and day out don't appear to have what they need to do their job um, appropriately. So it's really important that a policy be brought forth so that not only staff know what's expected of them, but members of the public know what's expected of them at that location as well. So I do appreciate uh, council's support on this motion. Any other comments? <coughs> Can we uh, hear the motion please? Motion moved by Stacy White, seconded by Casey Owens. Be it resolved that staff be directed to bring forth a formalized protocol procedure for dump employees to follow, including a system to ensure proper collection of information required at the gate. Any objection? None noted. Motion carried. Uh, item nine, introduction, reading and consideration of bylaws. I have a motion moved by Dennis Perrier, seconded by Eugene Ivanoff. Be it resolved that the following bylaw be read at first, second, and third time, numbered, passed, signed by the mayor and the clerk, and the seal of the corporation be affixed thereto. Bylaw number 20-050 being a bylaw to execute an agreement with WSCS Consulting Inc. to perform a service delivery review for the corporation of the town of Kirkland Lane. Any further discussion? None noted. Any objections from council? None noted. Motion carried. I have a motion moved by Casey Owen, seconded by Patrick Adams. Be it resolved that the following bylaw be read at first, second, and third time. Numbered, passed, signed by the mayor and the clerk, and the seal of the corporation be affixed thereto. Bylaw number 20-051, being a bylaw to stop up, close, and declare the road allowance located to the south of lot 72, Plan M-109 as surplus land. Any comments from council? Uh, Councillor Owens. This is the one on uh, Foss Lane, right? Just there's no description, it's just lock numbers and it's... Just, yeah, it should be clarified. Through your worship, yes, this is the one on Foss Lane. Oh yeah, thank you. Any further comments? Any objections? Motion carried. I have a motion moved by Stacy White, seconded by Eugene Ivanoff. Be it resolved that the following bylaw be ready for second and third time, numbered, passed, signed by the mayor and the clerk, and the seal of the corporation be affixed thereto. Bylaw number 20-052 being a bylaw to authorize the execution of an agreement with Richard Roy for a portion of municipal property located across from 35 Premier Avenue East. Any comments from council? None noted. Any objections from council? None noted. A motion carried. Item number 10, questions from uh, to, from council to staff, and uh, noted. Notice of motions. Sorry, Pat. Oh, sorry. Kelly, uh, Councillor White looks like she has something to say. Sorry, I missed that. Sorry. sorry. Yeah, no, it's just um, I wanted to. It wasn't something that was put uh forward ahead of time, but um, Ashley had mentioned that about the website. So I was just curious, she said in the coming weeks, when can we expect the new websites to be launched? Uh, the Town of Kirkland Lake and the Economic Development website. Thank you, Your Worship, through you to Council. So the target date, as I understand it, was June 2020. 
I can advise you that the website is closed, but there's still some minor improvements that need to be made before we launch it. So I would suggest that prior to the end of June, you will see a new website for the, the corporate main page, kirklandlake.ca. Thank you. Uh, any notice of uh, motion? None noted. Councillors' uh, reports? Councillor Adams, do you wish to speak uh, yeah, on item so 12.1? Pretty much my request is just a simple one. If uh, I certainly believe in uh, communicating to the public and if we have the tools available for social media, uh, we can utilize them to at least communicate uh, when upcoming council meetings are because uh, the citizens should know when what we're discussing, be able to watch it. I'm not sure if you're able to see this, but just on the Corporation of the City of Timiskaming Shores, on their Facebook page, you can watch their council meeting right from their page. And they even talk about when their upcoming meetings are. If this is something that we can do as well, uh, I would certainly uh, request support from other members of council to uh, allow that to happen and direct our CIO to investigate that opportunity. That would be appreciated. Comments from council. Councillor White. Um, of course, this was some, would be something that I would second. Um, it goes along with our transparency, our communication, and I really don't think it needs to be said. I think um, I was told today that it was posted today on uh, the Facebook page that we would be meeting tonight. So that's an excellent ongoing um, initiative from staff. So I would second Councillor Adams' motion to investigate the live streaming on Facebook. That's an interesting. I think this is part of the uh, the communication policy that's uh, coming through on our strategic plan. I don't think we have to approve it tonight, but we certainly uh, should be looking at it. Uh, I do have some concerns uh, with social media uh, from a security standpoint. Uh, I do note that uh, there is a community municipality in Northern Ontario that uh, was hacked, uh, their town website, and held at ransom for $50,000. Uh, we have to be very careful and uh, prudent uh, and investigate all, uh, do our due diligence before we go ahead. But we do have to investigate this, I do agree. Any other comments? Do we have a motion? Motion moved by Patrick Adams, seconded by Dennis Perrier. Be it resolved that memorandum number 2020-CNL-001 entitled communication of upcoming council meetings through social media be received. And that council directs the CIO to communicate upcoming meetings of council through social media and where possible stream meetings live on social media pages. Any further comments? Any objections? None noted. Motion carried. Are there any updates uh, from council? I, I just would like to comment. I think I, I meant it, uh, uh, mentioned earlier uh, with the CIP, uh, we are looking at alternatives for funding. Uh, it would be nice to, to get uh, funding in place that's not going to affect our uh, tax levy. Uh, we have some ideas that uh, senior staff have been working on, and I've had some discussion on, on it as well. <coughs> and we hope to have some news on that uh, respect uh, to bring us up to date of, of any successes that we've had. That's my only comment. Any further comments? None noted. Uh, additional information. 
Adoption of budget notice verbal. Megan Elliott. Clerk. Thank you, Your Worship, through you to Council. As per our notification bylaw, we are required to give notice at the regu regular meeting prior to that we are planning to adopt the proposed budget. So this is just a formality to give notice to the public that next regular meeting we will be considering the adoption of the 2020 annual budget. So I have a motion by Stacey White. Oh, sorry. Okay. I have a motion moved by Stacey White, seconded by Casey Owen. Be it resolved that notice is hereby given in accordance with bylaw 19-078, being a bylaw to establish procedures for public notice that the adoption of the proposed 2020 annual budget will be considered at the June 16, 2020 regular meeting of council. Any further comments, concerns, any opposition? None noted, motion carried. Motion to move uh, into closed session. I have a motion moved by Eugene Ivanov, seconded by Dennis Carrier. Be it resolved that council move into an in-camera meeting pursuant to section 239.2 to discuss one proposed land disposition, one matter about an identifiable individual, and one litigation matter. Any objection? None noted. Motion carried. Okay. Your Worship, I'm just going to take a moment to pause the recording and live stream. Yeah. Uh, if perhaps if you wanted a break at all or.